I am so sure you have seen this screen on countless number of websites where you click over here, you open up a dialog box, sign in with your Google account, and off you go to the races by accessing that particular platform. But have you ever wondered how easy or difficult it is to implement that in your web development project? If you thought about that, you have come across the right video because in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to implement that and more morally implement it with very minimum amount of code. And by the time you're done watching this video, you're gonna be able to take the project files, open up your project and implement the code and you will be off to the races. So let's just see a quick demo how this works. So I'm gonna click over here and this dialog box will come up and I'll just pick the second one. And this is gonna show me the email that I logged in. And I'll show you what happens next after, as we go along with this particular tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead just to show you, this is one email. So this is not like, hey, you only can do it with one email. You could do it with any number of email. So I'm gonna click on this one. So now the email change, so on and so forth. So now, I'll show you how this works under the hood. So let me open up my VS code. So let's go through this quickly because I really want you to go ahead, take this code, implement it into your project, and you will be able to collect those emails from Google sign in. All right, so let's get right to it. So this is your typical uh, HTML page. I'm just using a bootstrap with the awesome function and you can literally do whatever you want. And the magic that actually happens is in this library that I have created for my projects. And I, if you wanna see how this works in a live demo, you can always hop on over to the Sark link Dot com. This is my SaaS company where creators go in there, sell their courses, download services, and get paid. And if you are interested, in, go ahead, log in, and you can click on this start free trial, and then that way allow you to log into the system, and you'll see exactly how that works. So let's go back to our code. So this particular JavaScript library, which don't worry, you're gonna get it in the description there will be a link where you can download it and you can implement that so the very first thing what you want to do is include this and let's just show you it will be in your folder javascript folder here and then this fairly small library that i have created and this helps me literally with a very few amount of line of codes to implement that google sign in button so let's go on and see how that works. So let's go down and nothing special is going on. This is just a prompt that says, hey, uh, let's close this out for now. Uh, this is just a GUI here. Cloak uh, this particular sign up with Google. You got your arrow coming from the awesome function, not awesome function, it was like an awesome, uh, font awesome library coming from there and then this button right here. So that's what's happening in this container. Nothing major, the meat and the potato that happens is in here. So the JavaScript library, which is this, you can initiate it by calling it this way. And then it takes a few uh, parameters. It has few functions that you will need to include it in here. And the very first one will be the element ID. So whatever element, so in this case, I have it as this, this element ID, I can include it in here. And then it takes the client, the Google client ID, which I'm gonna show you how to get that for your application. And then followed by the check uh, in token, where it means that, so the way that it works is Google sends you, gives you a key, and that is associated with a domain. And then on the front end side, the JavaScript parts takes care of that. And then on the back end side, Google is going to send you a token that you need to verify it. And then once you verify that token that it, with Google, 
then it's going to give you the information back for that particular individual. So that is what's going to happen in here. And don't worry, when we are done with this, you're going to see how easy it is. So that's what happening in the check-in and then it fails. So for example, this check-in part, if it fails, you want to include a URL to say, hey, something went wrong and we are going to go fix this, meaning you're going to fix this. And if everything is, goes according to the plan, then there's going to be this function called success URL that you can put your success URL in here. And then if you want to do the callback function, which means it's going to pass the data, you can put it in here and do further uh uh, Ajax request or whatever you want to do it in your application. And let's go ahead, hop on over to the Google so that way we can get the client ID. So we'll go over here and to access that, what you want to do is you want to go to this URL, which will be the console.cloud.google.com. And I will leave it link in the description for all of these amazing things that you would need. So let's go here, here. I'm already signed in. So first time that you wanna sign in, you wanna see the screen. If you don't know where you should be clicking, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you exactly where to go click this. And the beautiful and amazing bar that probably nobody told you about this, with this Google sign in, Unlike your other API keys, if you just want to get the user's information, like for example, name, email, the picture profile, picture profile being like something like this over here on the top right hand side, you can use the Google sign in login up to 2 million people for your application. I don't think there's a hard limit, but I know 2 million people, uh, 2 million sign-on are very reasonable. So if your application goes to 2 million sign-in, then we should definitely talk because we should be working on a project together. Uh, like the one that I built over here, the Sark Lake. Uh, this has a, a lot of people uh, using it. We're talking nearly about 1,000 or plus like several, I think it's thousand plus, I don't even remember the exact number, but nonetheless, uh, there's a lot of people using it and I'm using the same thing. So I implemented it in here and to show you how you can get that, what are you gonna do is you're gonna click on the three dots, the hamburger menu, and then you're gonna go down to this at the moment of this recording, I believe it's under API services. And then you wanna click on auth consent screen. Click on that, and once you are here, if this is the first time you are getting here, you are gonna have to create a project. So we'll go ahead and create a project. Uh, you can call it literally, what do you wanna call it? I'll just call this test project. And don't worry about the organization, you could just leave it blank, that's fine. And click on create. And once that's created, it may take a couple of seconds for it to go ahead and do its thing in Google platform. And then once it's done, it's going to tell you your project is created. And now we can rock and roll. So from here, you want to go to clients and then create client. And from here, you want to give it a name. So in this case, I'll just call it local host. And if you want to add a couple of emails just to test it out, I'll just add mine for right now and click on create. And then we'll list for internal, external, we're going to say external and then go next and then contact email. Uh, I'll just put mine for right now, the gmail.com and we'll click over here and agree, continue. And then we're going to click on create. So that is all done. Perfect. So now we got that in here. Now we're gonna create a auth client. Click on this. And then from here, we wanna click the drop down box and we wanna pick web application. And then from there, you could just call it whatever you want. I'll just call it local host because I'm testing it in here. And then, but if you were to put it on your live website, you wanna put the name in here. For example, if I were to create it for Sark Link 
Soft.com. I will put that soft link in here. And then followed by the original origin of the JavaScript, wherever you are going to be accessing on the front end side. So let's say on the local host, you just want to pay at the main domain. So in this case, I'm just using a local host, but if you were, if I were to use it on my main website, I would put in www, I mean, THP, HTTPS, colon, backslash, backslash, or rather forward slash, forward slash, uh, sarklink.com, that would be one of them. And then I want to add another one, call that www.sarklink.com. So in case the URL, when somebody's asking, they put the www in there. If you don't put that in there, the Google app script, uh, not the app script, but the login screen is not going to work. So you want to click on deletes. We're just going to add that. And then we're going to click on create. And this is the secret that you want to copy. And don't worry, you can copy it right now, but it's not going to work on yours because I'm going to delete it after I'm done using it. So this is the secret that you want to use on the front end side as well as on the back end side so let's say god forbid if you have exposed this to somebody else's uh, way they got this but don't worry about it because whatever website that is listed here can only be signed on to it so let's say if sarklink had this particular uh client id you can't use it because all it will check the Google will check the domain that is associated with it, and it's going to only be exposed to that, and they can only get that information, nobody else. So that is like a keeps a nice little validation check on the Google side. So we're going to click OK, <clears throat> and then here it is. So now we are good to go. So the next thing what we want to do is we're going to go over. So we got this part. So the next thing what we're going to do is on our project. We already looked at the Google JavaScript part. Now we're going to look at the class that I created that it will talk to uh, on the back end side with the Google with this particular API, with a token, so on and so forth. And once it's done, it's going to return this information to you. So it will be the client ID, which more likely you're not going to use it. It's just a user ID based on Google's database, which is whatever. But the most important thing is the email, full name, if you want to use it, first name, last name, and then the picture, whatever picture profile that it has. So you just, basically, you just want to take this, include it, and that's that. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go over here and go to my token URL. And then in my token URL, I have this config uh, file, which I already have the API key over here. And I'm just including it in here. And then I'm including the class, which is this class, which I just showed you, which is the Google login standalone uh, class, PHP class. You're going to include that at the top. And then I'm going to check to see if on the front end side, which means the JavaScript, when it goes through, validates it, does it give me a token? If it gives me the token, and I'm gonna send it through a post, and if it finds it, then it's gonna go ahead, execute this. If it can, it's gonna say, token not provided. And once it finds that, it's gonna take that token, put it into the verify, and before that, it's gonna take the Google client ID, which we just got, put it into this class. And then from here, we're going to use the verify function uh, just to show you, which will be this right here. This takes a token and the main class takes a client ID, so on and so forth. And once we're done with this, it's going to take this user data. And like I just showed you before, it's going to give you the ID, email. The most important thing will be the email. And the name, whether you want the full name, first name, last name, kind of thing, whatever. And the picture, if you want to use it. And once you're done, it's going to send it over to your front end side, which will be this uh, right here. So just to show you, let's go back here. And I will put this under the console log. Refresh the page. 
and then I'm gonna click on the sign up and then I'll go over here. Let's set this one. Once it successfully logs in and don't worry about these other top arrows up the top is just ignore that for now. So the object that it returns is the data. So what I'm doing here is that I'm simply taking all of this and I'm saying assigning it to the object called data, returning the whole thing. And in here, this is what it looks like. So you got your email, you got your verified, whether it's verified or not. Then you got your full name, first name right here, last name, ID, and the picture. And then this is some other information that Google sends you, so on and so forth. So that's how easy it is for you to implement it. So what I'm also gonna show you is, so let's go over here. So let's say in the success part, right? You got that, which means everything went smoothly. You got the token on the JavaScript side, you passed it on to the PHP and you went over to the Google. Google gave you all that information and that's why you were able to see this. And once you see this, and then you could do your own little processing of your data, what you want your next screen to do after the user has successfully logged in and you got the information that you wanted, which is the name and email. And then you could do that in your, uh, in here, sending it back to the JavaScript. I mean, back to your Ajax request, some other processing, or you could simply just go over here, say it is success and you could do your database mine data mining thing whatever that you want to do in here and then send it over and then send a url which will be redirected to your dashboard so on and so forth and that's how you could do that in here so having said that that's fairly easy and then also i will leave a link uh on an, in a description on how to use uh this javascript particular class even though I showed you just the bare minimum of it, there's a lot more features that I have added in there that you could incorporate. But if you just take, just take this literally up to success and copy paste and fill in the blanks for your project, you are gonna be off to the races and then you can implement Google sign in with no problem whatsoever. However, if you want further information i will leave a link in the description to check out the rest of the class and also and if you made it this far what i want to do is i want to offer you a one quick little thing which would be my upcoming course is for quarter income basically in this particular course that i will be launching pretty soon it's gonna be for web developers coders like you who have this skill but just don't know how to monetize it and get paid for it and then you can go to the quarterincome.com, sign up for the early bird so that when the course becomes available, you are going to be the one who's going to get a 90% discount up front. And everybody who signs up after it's launched, they're going to pay the full premium price. And in this course, just to give you an idea, you're going to be learning all the things that I have done in the past 10 plus year about creating a uh, SaaS companies, running my own uh, web development agency and working with the multi-million dollar companies, how I ask them for a contract, how I pay them, how do I take the information and work on their project, project management, so on and so forth. And if you want someone who has done this for years and been successful, you definitely need to go ahead and sign up for the early bird. Uh, sign up for this course and if you like this video subscribe because if you don't you're never going to hear from me ever again